Epiretinal membrane is a condition that affects the retina, commonly seen in senior people over time. Let's look at this eye model to explain. If we take the top up here, looking inside of the eye, the retina is the thin layer of nerve tissue that lines the inside of the eye. It acts like a camera film where light rays come here crosses the eye, comes into the retina, which transferred to the brain, and then we can see. Simply speaking, epiretinal membrane is a growth of tissue that builds up on the surface of the retina, leading to wrinkling of the retinal surface, which in turn affect the quality of the vision. The diagnosis can be made at the eye clinic by checking the back of the eye or by the use of a scan called OCT scan, which captures cross-sectional images of the retina. These membranes can grow into different shapes and they usually build up over time. The exact cause of epiretinal membrane is unknown. However, Normally in our eyes, we have a gel filling the back of our eyes. This gel is called the vitreous. This gel or the vitreous usually breaks up over time. Till the point the gel starts to separate from the back of the eye. This condition is often called posterior vitreous separation or detachment. And for unknown reason, Sometimes this may irritate the retinal surface, leading to the buildup of the membrane. These kind of membranes are often called primary epiretinal membrane. However, in some people, these membranes may build up on the retinal surface following previous eye surgery or previous eye trauma or previous laser treatment, which are often called secondary epiretinal membrane. The majority of epiretinal membranes are mild and have limited impact on vision. However, in some people, these membranes may continue to grow, leading to further wrinkling of the retinal surface. And this may lead to distortion of the image, so straight lines may appear wavy or distorted. They can also lead to blurring of the vision. Some people may experience difference in the image size between both eyes. The severity of the symptoms mainly depend on the impact of the membrane on the retina. Once the diagnosis uh, of epiretinal membrane is made, we recommend all patients to monitor their vision with a certain grid called Amisler grid. This is a simple square containing a grid pattern with a small dot in the center. And we often recommend patients to check one eye at a time. Patients with epiretinal membrane may notice the lines appear slightly wavy or distorted or occasionally blurring in the central part of their vision. In many patients, the membrane is mild and has only limited impact on vision. So usually in that situation, no treatment is needed. However, in some people, the membrane may continue to grow, leading to further distortion or blurring of the image, which may affect the quality of the vision, especially during reading or driving. In that situation, treatment is recommended. The 
The main line of treatment for abretinal membrane is surgery. For abretinal membrane, stronger glasses or eye drops will not help. This surgery is called vitrectomy and this surgery involves removing the gel from the inside of the eye. So looking at this eye model, the surgery is made by making tiny small incisions in the white of the eye. Usually three small incisions are made less than one millimeter in size and with the aid of fine instruments the gel is removed from the inside of the eye and then with a special fine micro forceps the membrane is peeled from the retinal surface. Fortunately with the new technology the surgery now takes about 30 to 40 minutes it's usually done under local anesthetic. The surgery is often performed as day surgery, which means that patients can go home after the surgery on the same day. They will gradually notice improvement in their vision. It usually takes few weeks to reach the final improvement in the vision. And we often recommend monitoring the healing process of the retina with repeated retinal scans to assess the restoration of the retinal layers after the surgery. The main reason to proceed for the surgery is an attempt to improve the vision. So if your symptoms are minimal or you are not aware of any blurring or distortion in your vision, so surgery may not be needed. However, if the distortion or the blurring affects your ability to read or drive or perform daily tasks, you may consider the surgery.